Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning to everyone who's watching from all around the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood, and with me right now is a very, very, very honored guest, uh, Father, Father Zachariah Boutros. And Father Zachariah, um, you've been called Islam's public enemy number one. There was uh, there's a sixty million dollar Al Qaeda yeah. Al Qaeda hit out on you, and uh, for those of you who for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm guessing most of you do, but for those of you out there who don't know, uh, Father Zechariah was the one who came before us all, right? So now we have a lot of people who are really blasting away at the foundations of Islam, going through the Quran, going through uh, the life and teachings of Muhammad. But Father Zachariah was the one who started all of this uh, off in this modern age. And that's why, uh, that's why a group like Al-Qaeda uh, wants him dead. And so we are honored to have him. And uh, I know that I get criticized sometime for talking too much when I have a guest with me. I don't want to do that this evening. Do not want to do that this evening. So I'm going to let uh, Father Zachariah do uh, most of the talking. Um, I'm just going to ask some questions and uh, he can take as long as he wants to answer. And I uh, hope all of you enjoy this because he's been doing it a lot longer than I have. Uh, he knows a lot more than I ever will on the topic of Islam because he has access to sources that I just just don't have access to. And so this is going to be awesome. And so uh, welcome, Father Zachariah. Thank you so much, Welcome for all you and all the viewers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, a good place to start here, a good place to start um, will be uh, how you got interested in the topic of Islam. Because one, most people, most people around the world uh, don't spend a lot of time criticizing Muhammad and the Quran, and certainly not uh, most, not, not many uh, Orthodox Coptic priests uh, don't spend a lot of time doing this. And so how did you, how did you get interested in this topic? Okay. First of all, I want to clarify that my target is not attacking Islam. My ultimate intention is to preach the gospel to Muslims. Mm -hmm. When I speak about Islam, Muhammad, and Quran, is to expose that they are from Satan in order to save Muslims from Persian. That's why I speak to them also about Jesus Christ the, for salvation for the, of the, their false souls. Mm -hmm. As for how did I become interested in that, actually, it is a long story, but to cut it short, it was a call from God. He sent to me many Muslims when I was in Egypt who challenged me, accusing me an infidel as I am Christian. They mocked my faith and the doctrine of the Trinity, incarnation, crucifixion, and many other things. While I was preparing response about these things, God told me that is not the problem. The main problem that I want you to know is that they are deceived by Muhammad, who was deceived by Satan, and they all will perish. But you as my servant have to preach them to be saved. God guided me that to preach Muslims, I have to follow a certain strategy. 
first to reveal the obstacles and show them our true belief about the one God in the Trinity, the incarnation of God in Jesus Christ, the redemption of the cross, and the Bible and the Word of God. <clears throat> Secondly, to expose the false belief in Muhammad, Quran, Hadith, which uh, are the sayings of Muhammad, uh, Gabriel, who is called Jibril, and Allah of Muhammad. This is not God, it's Allah. Something else. Thirdly, to present the biblical gospel, the creation, the sin, the redemption, and accepting Jesus Christ in our heart by faith to save us and renew us and give us a new birth to become true Christians. Amen. <clears throat> so this was this was a, a calling from God. Uh, so yep. that is that is really awesome and uh, uh, a lot. Uh, again, for those of you who are new, so, because some people just become interested in Islam, like you know, recently and so on. And so, uh, <clears throat> for those of you who are new to this, um, the reason the reason uh, Father Zachariah had a uh, has a sixty million dollar hit out on his head was uh, for uh, sharing that with Muslims. Uh, for obeying and honoring this call and for leading so many Muslims out of Islam that he became a threat, a massive threat uh, to people who want to keep Muslims under their control. Um, all right, now, uh, uh, one thing that happens here in the West is one of the main criticisms I get from Christians is that I, I'm too mean when I talk about Muhammad and the Quran, and a lot of Christians say that we should only preach the gospel. We should only preach Jesus, but we should never criticize Muhammad or the Quran because this will hurt the feelings of <clears throat> Muslims, and they won't listen to us, and uh, they'll never listen to Christians again if we criticize Muhammad and the Quran. Uh, so are, are, are Christians here in America and the rest are they right when they say that we that we shouldn't criticize Muhammad or the Quran? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, we should not flatter people at the expense of truth. Again, we should not flatter people at the expense of truth. A question. Did Jesus Christ flattered the Pharisees when he said to them, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against man, for you neither go in, you yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. That's Matthew 23, verses 13. Now, the Bible says, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. That is in the second epistle of Timothy. Chapter 4, verse 2. A key word in this verse is long suffering. With Muslims, it often takes long hours of research, patience, instruction before you see fruit. For 20 years and more, I have been attempting through my television programs, internet, broadcasts, books, and sermons to teach those who I call 
the seekers of truth, Muslims, who are open to know the truth. No flattering. Amen. 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 So, uh, uh, you, now you mentioned you are, uh, uh, Father Zachariah mentioned his uh, TV programs and so on. Just wanted to notify everyone that the links to uh, his channels, both English and Arabic uh, channels, the links are in the description box as well as to, uh, yeah, yeah, all the link, all the links are right there. And so be sure to check those out. Uh, if you're English, uh, if you speak English, then click on the English channel. If you uh, speak Arabic, then, then click on the Arabic channel. I did want to answer i want to answer a quick uh, a quick response from a muslim here who said uh, it doesn't hurt my feelings it strengthens my iman uh ahmed you i know you guys say that uh, every muslim says that when inside of him his confidence in islam is being torn apart and what you guys what you guys say outward when your confidence in your faith in Islam and Muhammad in the Quran are being torn apart, you uh, you want to put on a good show and you say, no, it's building up my confidence. Uh, we know that's not true. Almost every Muslim I've ever seen who left Islam a few months earlier was telling me how his faith is only getting stronger and then he leaves Islam. So uh, if you're here boasting about your faith getting stronger because of the information that's going out there about Muhammad, uh, amen, because we know we know it's tearing you apart inside. Um, okay, so uh, Father Zachariah, uh, on the topic of Muslim leaders, Muslim leaders talking to Muslims, telling mm-hmm. Muslims about Muhammad, telling Muslims about the Quran and all the miracles of the Quran and all the miracles of, uh, of Muhammad and how wonderful Muhammad was, Muslim leaders uh, say things like, for, for example, that the Quran has been perfectly preserved, never one change anywhere in the Quran. Um, but when, when I read the books, I find in the Muslim sources, it talks about changes all the time, entire chapters of the Quran being lost, verses being lost, uh, Aisha's sheep eating verses that are no longer in the Quran. And I know the the Muslim scholars, the Muslim leaders, they have to know this. They have they've read these sources, so they know this information. So my question, uh, because you know the the Muslim sources much better than I do, do you believe that Muslim scholars, Muslim sheikhs, mm. Muslim imams are actually lying to Muslims about Muhammad? Are they lying about Muhammad and the Quran and and so on? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. They did and continuously doing. They confessed openly on air in the Arabic TV channels that they were lying to people in their talks. And I have these videos which shows that they say were lying on paper. And if you want me to send you these values, I am ready. But it is in Arabic. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe could make a translation for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Subtitles. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so they are. And, and by the way, I, I've I've seen a, I've seen a. Uh, there's a famous video where a Muslim, uh, a Muslim scholar is talking about preaching to. Non-Muslims, and uh, if a, he tells the people, if a if a non-Muslim says that he doesn't want to become a Muslim because he'll have to give up alcohol, then we tell him, no problem, just become a Muslim and you can continue to drink alcohol. So we tell him, it's okay to drink alcohol, just become a Muslim. And as soon as he becomes a Muslim, then they say, now we'll beat you if you drink. So you're not allowed to uh, not allowed to drink. So yes, even uh, yes, we even have some of those in English where Muslim scholars and Muslim uh, imams, yeah. Muslim speakers are admitting that they lie, that they lie to people. Um, I saw video. Yeah, yeah, famous video. Yeah. Um, now we we have we have uh, many Muslims here in the chat right now. We have many Muslims in the chat, and well, yes, amen. So since we know, <laughs> since we know that uh, oh by the way we have over a thousand people watching uh, watching live right now, um, and we know that many Muslims are in the chat, and we know that their leaders have lied to them about Muhammad and the Quran and so on. Uh, Father Zakaria. Uh, 
if you, what would you want these Muslims to know about the Quran? And you could take as, as, as long as you want, uh, but it, it, what information would you like to share with them about the Quran? Uh, mm -hmm. Because they have false beliefs about the Quran, but, but what's the truth? Good question. I want Muslims to know that Muhammad was a false prophet deceived by Satan. And Satan guided him all his days of life when he was on earth. Muhammad was deceived by Satan who appeared to him and who talked to him and who guided his way. So he deceived Muhammad and Muhammad deceived all Muslims. Yeah. So uh, with the with the with the Quran, uh, <clears throat> Muslims are told that the Quran is a perfect book that uh, the teachings of the Quran are perfect, that the Quran has been perfectly preserved, that the Quran uh, contains scientific miracles, that it's the most wonderful book uh, ever. Um, are, are, are these things true about it? I mean, you've, I'm sure you've read the Quran many times. Uh, do, you, do you think that it is a wonderful book? Uh, I have many episodes, you know. Mm -hmm. In, uh, in my programs mm -hmm. about Quran, mm -hmm. not less than 40 episodes mm -hmm. about the errors in Quran, scientific errors, historical errors, geographical errors, theological errors, and grammar errors, Arabic. Grammar errors, language errors. How could a book from God is full of these errors? How did their Allah know the truth? That's why he makes many mistakes. So I want Muslims to know that Quran is a false book inspired not by God, inspired by Satan to Muhammad to deceive him and deceive all the people. And Satan is working against Christ as God was incarnated in Christ, so Satan imitated that. Satan himself was incarnated in Muhammad. To make another story, he wants people not to go behind Jesus Christ and be saved. So he made the same story and he was incarnated in Muhammad and spoke to him to deceive the whole world. That's why he deceived all the Muslims. Millions and millions were deceived by Muhammad. Uh, there are uh, there are lots of lots of stories about Muhammad. Uh, for you Muslims who are watching, there are lots of stories that your leaders just don't tell you about and. So the only way you Muslims learn about <clears throat> about these stories about your prophet is to uh, is to come to us, right? Because we're the only ones who are going to tell you. Your leaders won't tell you, uh, politicians won't tell you, uh, CNN won't tell you. No journalist is going to tell you. No one's going to tell you what is in your actual sources, and you guys don't read them. So you, we're the only people. We're, we're the you get mad at us for telling you, but we're the only people who actually tell you what's in your sources. And uh, very, uh, very, uh, very strong language to say that Muhammad is, is led by Satan or something like that. But uh, if you read your sources, you, you see why. I mean, Muhammad's first, first impression of his revelations was that he was demon-possessed. His first encounter with 
what he believed, what he later believed was the angel Gabriel made him suicidal, depressed and suicidal, tried to hurl himself off a cliff. Uh, Muhammad later claimed to be the victim of black magic, which was giving him these crazy thoughts and, and false beliefs. And uh, of course, there's the satanic verses where he admitted that he delivered revelations from the devil. And if you, if you Muslims read about the process of Muhammad receiving these revelations, it sounds like something out of a horror movie. It sounds like something terrifying where he b falls on the ground and his skin changes color and he begins sweating. It sounds like something from a horror film. It sounds like something like demonic yeah. possession. So um, again, you're only getting this, you're only getting this from us. Now, uh, Father Zachariah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Can I add something? You can add anything you want. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, the first day Muhammad was possessed by the devil and he came down from the cave of Hara, he, like you described, mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. His wife asked him, Khadija, the first wife, what's wrong with you? He confessed openly and said to her, I feel I am possessed by Satan. He himself said that, and these are written in their books in Arabic. But no one wanted to say that. He confessed that I am possessed by Satan. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think that is a, a massively important point. Uh, you Muslims who are watching, try not to miss this. Muhammad met something in a cave. Yeah. He, he was the only one there when he left, Muslims. When he left, he thought he was demon-possessed. He goes to his wife and says, ah, I think I'm, I'm demon-possessed. And his wife, who wasn't there, who didn't see anything, who had no idea, who's trying to calm her husband down because he's suicidal, he's trying to kill himself. She calms him down and says, no, 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 It's you're, you're a prophet, that was that was an angel. How would she know? What in the world does this woman know, uh, Muslims? So your, your, your confidence in Islam, it actually it comes from Khadija, not from Muhammad. Muhammad thought that he was demon-possessed when he started uh, receiving revelations. So, all right. Um, now, on the, on the topic of Muhammad, Muslims are taught that Muhammad was the, the greatest man ever. Um, I mean, what Muslims say today, uh, that he's, he's the, the seal of the prophet. So there are all these prophets in the Bible. And then you had John the Baptist and Jesus. And now we have Muhammad, who is the last, and Muslims believe, the, the greatest now. Uh, You've read all about Muhammad and you've been making uh, videos and doing shows for, for many, many years. When you yeah. read about Muhammad, uh, what would you want the Muslims here to know about, about Muhammad that they don't know? The same thing I said. Muhammad was possessed by the devil. He was a false prophet. And uh, I spoke that, like you said, uh, many, many episodes mm -hmm. about his behavior. Mm -hmm. About his behavior. No prophet can behave like that. He married a, a young mm -hmm. girl which was six years old. He married her and have intercourse with her when she was nine years old. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Is there any prophet can do that? Is there any man in the world can do that? He's possessed by devil. And so he had more than 60 women whom he had sex with them. 13 of them were wives. The rest are possessed by hand, by his hand. Slave girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how is that? A prophet comes and he says, I have no interest in your world, except in three things. Women, food, and perfume. Mm -hmm. 
a prophet has no interest in the world except in three bad things. How it comes. So, Muslims have to know openly and directly that Muhammad was a false prophet used by Satan. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and I, I think uh, if we look at the evidence, that is that is just in, indisputable. Uh, when we look at uh, when we look at Muhammad's life, his teachings just does not line up. Uh, lots of Muslims here they will they would point out they would say ah but you know look at uh, look at prophets in the Bible look at you know King David he sinned and so on and they don't understand yes you can point to things that that prophets did but those things are sins ladies and gentlemen. When King David slept with Bathsheba, that was a sin. He was condemned for that. In Islam, Muhammad does all of these things, and Allah just thinks it's great. So no matter how many things Muhammad does, no matter, uh, no matter what he does with a little girl or with his own adopted son's wife, no matter what he does, Allah just tells him, good, good job, keep on doing it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there's no way, there's just no way that Muhammad is in the same line of prophets as we find in the Bible. In, in the Bible, prophets sinned and they were rebuked by God, they were punished. In Islam, it almost seems like Muhammad's God just wants him to keep sinning more and more and more. And uh, 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 along, along those lines, ladies and gentlemen, there's, uh, there's even in the, in the hadiths where Allah says that if people didn't sin, he would destroy them. He would destroy them for not sinning. He says he would create more people who would sin so that he could forgive them. And so Allah just wants people. Allah wants people to sin according to Muhammad. Does that sound like, like the God of the Bible, the God that the, the prophets uh, taught about? Uh, it doesn't. And so notice also, according to that, if Allah wants human beings to sin, then his ultimate enemy, his ultimate enemy would be a human being who refused to sin, would be his ultimate any enemy. Allah's ultimate enemy would be someone who refuses to sin. And that would be Jesus as the ultimate enemy of Muhammad's God. Can I add anything? You can Something. add, yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Muslims always compare Muhammad by the Old Testament. The behavior of prophets in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. the war in the Old Testament, they all will say that. Justify the works of Muhammad Ba, compare him with the Old Testament. It is wrong. Why? Because Old Testament was the law. It was the testament of the law. Law means something else than in the New Testament, the grace. In New Testament, we have the grace because in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, it says that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truths are given by Jesus Christ. So, Jesus Christ came to complete the Old Testament and to give us a new law. It's the law of grace. He gave us the Holy Spirit to help us to behave according to God's commandments in the New Testament. So, if they wanted to compare because Muhammad came after Jesus let them compare between Muhammad and Jesus mm -hmm. Quran and the New Testament not the Old Testament because Jesus Christ completed the Old Testament how could we go back to the Old Testament after Jesus Christ came and gave us grace so they are wrong to compare between Muhammad, Islam, and the Old Testament. It's wrong. If you want to compare, compare with the New Testament doctrines and Jesus Christ's behavior and salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so if, uh, 
we had uh, we had revelations uh, in the law in the in the Old Testament, and then uh, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And notice Islam just tries to wipe that out. Tries to wipe that out. Um, so for for the Muslims who are watching here, what would you have to say? What would you want them to know about? Jesus, because they think every Muslim I run into says, oh, no, we believe in Jesus. We love Jesus. We respect Jesus. Um, what would you want them to know about Jesus in case yeah. they don't know? They say that they believe in Jesus, yes, because the Quran said that. But they believe in Jesus as a man, not a a God incarnated in man, God incarnated in man, no, they deny that, they refuse this belief, they believe in Jesus as a prophet, a man, but I want them to know that Jesus is God incarnated in man, and he is the savior and the Redeemer. And I want to assure them that Jesus Christ loves them. And when he was on the cross, he died for them too, to save them. And if any one of them believes in Jesus Christ as a Redeemer and Savior, he will be saved. And he will be accepted in the kingdom of God. So, I want them, from the bottom of my heart, that they be open to know who is Jesus Christ, the God incarnated, the Redeemer and Savior, who is ready to save and change everybody to become a new creature. Amen. Amen. Uh, you Muslims who are, who are watching, um, who, because you always tell me that you respect Jesus and you love and honor Jesus. Um, you guys need to think about what you're saying, as, uh, as was just pointed out to you. Uh, according to what Jesus said and according to what the people who knew him said, Jesus is God in the flesh. He is God incarnate. God took on human flesh. And so... When you say you honor Jesus because you believe that he's, uh, he's just a human prophet, um, my friend Anthony Rogers said this would be like going to uh, uh, the, seeing the CEO of Amazon, right? The CEO of Amazon. Uh, uh, who's that? Jeff Bezos or something like that. You got Jeff Bezos. It would be like seeing him at Amazon and saying, aha, he's the janitor. I respect him. He's he's a he's a great janitor. Well, he's not. The, he wouldn't be a janitor. He's he's the he's the CEO, right? So, when you're claiming that you respect Jesus, but you're treating him as a much lower person, you are massively insulting him, dishonoring him, and so to claim that you are actually honoring him and you respect him when you're doing nothing, your religion does nothing but insult him. Uh, you need to you need to think a little bit more carefully about these things. Um, all right, so uh, on the topic of the Bible, um, when we look at Islam, we get very different things. When I look at the Quran, the Quran seems to praise the Bible, uh, praise the Torah, praise the uh, the the Injil. Uh, it the the, uh, the Quran tells Jews that they have to judge by the Torah, and that Christians we're supposed to judge by the gospel. And so the, the the Quran says wonderful things about the Torah and the gospel. But but every Muslim you ever you will ever meet says. Uh, the Bible's been changed. The Bible's been corrupted. You can't trust uh, the Bible. Um, so, what 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 would you want the the Muslims here to know about the Bible? Yes, it's a good question. Listen, and everyone, listen to me. The Quran <clears throat> attacked the Bible and said that was corrupted. Muslims say that, but actually, indeed, there are four verses only in the Quran accuse 
not the New Testament, but the Old Testament, and say that the Jews corrupted the Old Testament. And when he said that, he says they corrupted the meaning, mm -hmm. the interpretation, the explanation of the verses. It changed it. They could not change the words of God because God gave his word and no one can change it. The Quran says that. Mm -hmm. So they changed the interpretation, <laughs> mm -hmm. the meaning, mm -hmm. not the yeah, original word. And I challenge every Muslim in the world to bring me one verse in the Quran to say that the New Testament was corrupted. Mm -hmm. Even not one verse. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. So, what I want them but to know about the Bible, they have to know that the Bible is the true word of God that leads everybody to salvation by the blood of Christ, to be led by the Holy Spirit and be filled with the Holy Spirit and to open heavens in front of all people, called by God's grace to his kingdom. Without the Bible, they could not know the way to heavens. By the way, they don't know the way to heavens. They know the way to Al Jannah, which is a big garden full of four uh, rivers. One of them is a river full of wine. And there are, for every believer, 72 concubines. Beautiful girls. <laughs> so, this is a garden of, of the of Islam. It's a garden. I think that if Muhammad came to America, he would say, oh, this is the Jannah of God. This is a paradise mm -hmm. full of girls and full of wine. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, mm -hmm. a lie. There is no heaven in Islam. There is a a, a, a garden for their lusts, mm -hmm. no more. But the Bible show us, shows us what is the heavens, what is the kingdom of God, how we can go there and be with God and uh, enjoy his love and be united with him. That is the Bible. I hope that all of them know that. Muslims who attack the Bible, actually, they didn't read the Bible. Mm -hmm. If any Muslim read the Bible, you will see that he will become a good believer. Yep, we can uh, we can we can hope that they'll they'll start uh, they'll they'll start uh, reading after this. Um, you Muslims out there, uh, going along with, with what, what you just heard, uh, think about this. Uh, everything that your entire religion is aiming towards wine and women. Yeah. Uh, wine and women. It's all about wine and women. Why should I join this religion? Guys, wine and women, wine and women. Now, I, I just want to ask the Muslims here, do you think that the, the one true God, the God who created us all, the God who loved us so much that he entered creation to pay the price for us. Do you think that that God would try to entice you to follow his religion by just promising you uh, lots of lots of young sex partners and lots of wine? 
Yeah. Notice who does who 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 does that impe- who does that even appeal to? That uh, that appeals to very fleshly minded people who are just just focused on satisfying their own physical desires. In other words, it appeals to someone like Muhammad. It appeals to someone like Muhammad. So just think about this. We know what kind of man Muhammad was. He was someone who would climb on top of a nine-year-old girl. He was someone who would tell his followers, you can only have four wives, but I get more. I get lots more. Uh, He's someone who would see his own adopted son's wife wearing very little clothing and start lusting after her and then take her for himself. This is this is your problem. He's very, very fleshly minded. And, and as Father Zachariah already pointed out, uh, it, it was said Muhammad loved three, three things, uh, food, women, wine. I mean, food, women, perfume, food, women, perfume. So he's just obsessed with all these physical, physical delights. And imagine, do you think the true God, the true God came to Muhammad, sent an angel to Muhammad, and said, yes, I'm going to give you these revelations, and it's all about wine and women. Or or does that sound like something Satan would tempt Muhammad with? <laughs> does that sound like something Satan would come up with? Muhammad, if you're obsessed with your physical desires, let me tell you, they're all waiting for you. If you just do what I say and get everyone going out and killing for this religion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's right. Amen. All right. All uh, right. We're going to change the topic slightly. By the way, we have uh, 1,500 people watching. We have 1,500 people watching live right now. Um, On the issue of Islam spreading, um, there there was a Pew Research Research study that said that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Uh, Muslims like to, to, to point to that and say that this proves that it's from God. What they don't point out is that the same Pew Research study, the same Pew Research study said that Islam is growing rapidly because of, of the high birth rates. Muslims have the highest birth rates. Muslims, Muslim women have the most babies uh, in, in, uh, in, in various uh, Muslim countries. And that's the main reason that Islam grows rapidly. Uh, but uh, that Pew Research uh, study said that uh, I think by, by 2050, by 2050, something like that, that Islam is is set to pass Christianity as the world's largest religion. Uh, so my question for my question for you is, um, if Islam is is spreading rapidly due to high birth rates and it's already uh, 1.6 or 1.8 billion people and it's growing, uh, and then we have people like you, people like me, and we're responding to Islam and trying to show Muslims that it's false. Are we too late? Are we too late, or, or should we still be hopeful that uh, that Muslims will will see the truth and that they will abandon Islam before uh, Islam somehow subjugates the world? A very good question. A very good question. Yes, we are too late. Islam is spreading too fast. But God can stop it and save all Muslims. We should pray and preach to them. And the Holy Spirit will accomplish the work and save the truth seekers from Muslims. This is our faith. This is our belief. We are not working alone. God is using us. God is with us. God sent us to do his work, to accomplish his ministry, to call Muslims to become and invite them to become to him. So he is working. God is powerful and able to save any person who seeks for him. So this is our belief. And we pray and ask you all to pray. And we have to preach them the gospel to be saved. Thank you so much for this time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, that's uh, a <laughs> that 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 answer that answer reminded me of uh, that answer reminded me of uh, when Jesus said that uh, it's easier for a camel to go through the 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 head of a needle 
than for a rich man to enter paradise. And then his, his followers were, were shocked. And he said, with, uh, with, with, with man, it's impossible. But yeah. with, with God, all things are possible. And that sounded like your response. Yes, we're, we're too late. We can't, we, can't, we can't stop Islam, but, uh, but we're not alone. We have, we, have God. we have God with us. And so, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you're worried about the spread of Islam, just, just, uh, just remember the God that you serve. And this is, uh, this is not too big of a, uh, of a problem for him. Uh, all right. Well, I did not want to keep uh, Father Zachariah uh, too long. We have over 1,500 people here. Um, but I just want to give you any time to say anything else that you want to say um, to the Christians who are watching, to the Muslims who are watching, to anyone else uh, who is watching. Do you have uh, anything else that, that, that you'd like to add? Um, and and there, are lo- there, are lo- there are lots of things. It could, it could be a topic like, you know, uh, uh, an Islamic topic like, you know, abrogation or if you want, if there's anything you're studying now or uh, anything that's going on in the world, coronavirus or something like that. But uh, anything else you'd like to cover? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Now God is giving us an opportunity. He says to the humanity, it's enough. Stop here. So because of the virus of Corona, everything in the world is stopped. Every person is keeping himself in his house. He put an end to everything. So we have to take this opportunity in order to repent and come back to God. God is speaking to us the same thing like he did with Jonathan. Jonah, Jonah, when he sent it to him to Nineveh in order to preach the gospel there and all the people repent and then God forgave them. This is a golden opportunity. God is speaking to the whole world, the whole world through this virus which attacked all the world in one time to stop everything. God says to the people, what will you do? You are working and busy and uh, go away from my way astray, but stop, stop. Think again about your life and about your eternity. Seek how to be saved. No, there is no other way except Jesus Christ is the way of salvation. Come to him. He is ready to accept everybody and to forgive everybody. On the cross, he said, Oh, Father, forgive all their sins. So he is now saying to us, come, repent, and I forgive all your sins and the guide to the heavens. Amen. God be with you. Pray for me as I pray for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, uh, Father Zachariah, for, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for watching and uh father zacharia anytime you want to uh you want to join me uh i'm uh i'm <laughs> i'm at home because we are uh, we're all here for from the coronavirus where uh people are stuck at home so anytime you're studying some topic that you want to share with uh with with uh people on 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 youtube i'm here uh i'm here and uh, be happy to have you join me anytime to talk about anything that you're interested in again i want to remind everyone that the links to father zacharia's channels are in the description box so uh whether you know whether you speak english or arabic uh click on a channel uh, get that link and follow the material um we just want everyone we want all we want all the especially the christians out there to learn the material on those sites so that you can share it 
so that you can share that material with your Muslim friends and show them uh, that they've been lied to. And you Muslims who are watching, you Muslims, guys, you're going to be locked. You're going to be locked down for a while. You're going to be inside. Uh, go visit those channels. Visit those channels and get some information that your leaders just aren't going to give you because they're ashamed. Your leaders are ashamed of their own prophet. Your leaders are ashamed of their own book. And that's why they have to uh, lie about your prophet and his book. So get the truth, uh, visit the sites and talk to you all next time.